Tonight in the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5, it's the playoffs to determine which Premier League players win the last two spots at the final table. Welcome to Premier League Poker 5. We started off with 16 of the world's greatest players. They were divided into two groups of eight and played four heats each in a bid to accumulate points and win through to the final table. It's been one of the most exciting Premier Leagues ever with the biggest names in the game. And this is what's happened so far. We began with 16 Premier League players. They were divided into two groups of eight and they played four matches each, accumulating points on a league table. In Group A's matches, it was Phil Luck, Tony G, and yeah. global qualifier Matthew Franklin who took the first three wins. Going into Heat 4, the field was still wide open. But as Eugene Kachilov was sent to the rail, Luke Schwartz was also eliminated. Then it was disaster for Eric Seidel, who also fell into the elimination zone. This is how Group A's league table ended. The three players that have guaranteed a place in the final are Matthew Franklin, Tony G, and Sam Trickett. Phil Locke and Andy Frankenberger now have to play in a heads-up playoff for the fourth final table seat. In Group B's matches, it was Patrick Antonius, Yevgeny Timoshenko, and Scott Seaver who won the first three matches. The fourth heat saw Benjamin Wilanowski unable to qualify for the final, and Vanessa Selps and Elke were set to be very active as they sat in the elimination zone. Vanessa went on to steal the show, putting all the players to the test, and went on to take a massive chip lead. It was disappointment for Elke, however, as he was eliminated from the event. There were some heated exchanges as it went down to the wire three-handed. Vanessa needed to win in order to make the playoffs, but Jungleman denied her the chance to progress through. So this is how Group B's league table shaped up. Jungleman, Patrick Antonius, and Scott Seaver have all got seats at the final table. But Yevgeny Timoshenko and Tom Dwan will now go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the last seat. Now the playoffs will determine who takes the last two seats at the final. From Group A, it's Andy Frankenberger versus Phil Locke, and Group B, Yevgeny Timoshenko and Tom Dwan go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Taking us through all the action is Jesse May and Mike Sexton. Thrilled to be joined by Mike Sexton for this all-or-nothing stage of Premier League Poker 5, the heads-up matches where two players will play off for one seat at the final table in each group. And Mike, in Group A, first up, it's going to be Phil Locke versus Andy Frankenberger. I mean, what can you say about this Andy Frankenberger? Well, first of all, Jesse, let me say how great it is to be working with you one more time. Heads-up battles are always fun to watch and obviously a lot at stake for both of these matches. The winner goes through to the Premier League final where they could win 500,000. But Frankenberger and Locke, I look for Locke to be a more conservative player. I expect Frankenberger to be the aggressor. There has been this Andy Frankenberger factor the whole way through. He always chooses the alternate line. He confuses people, doesn't he? Well, he does. I played with him in the mixed game Premier League where he won that tournament. He's won a World Series of Poker bracelet. He's been the WPT Player of the Year, yet players still don't give him enough respect, in my opinion. And this is going to be a fun match between Phil Locke and Andy Frankenberger. Phil Locke's the banter king. There'll be plenty of it when these two sit down for a place at the Premier League final table. So sick. Sorry, buddy. That was sick. Big lay down. Please don't yell at me if I slow roll. Without all the acne, I actually probably would have snap called you. Check called. Could have checked raised. Bet. Bet called. Bet showed. That is a lot of options. I like my chances. This says I'm folding. I win. The first heads-up playoff for a seat at the Premier League final table is about to begin between Andy Frankenberger and Phil Locke. Phil, you made the final in season four. How important is it to make it here again? Uh, the, we're, it's like we're playing a match for 175000 because the loser gets nothing and the winner gets uh, 
a package worth 175,000 that could be turned to a half million or 55k depending but yeah so it's a, it's you know important for both of us there's a lot here at stake and we have the current mixed game champion as well so how badly do you want this yeah anytime you get this close uh like phil said it's a very steep bubble so i'd love to make another run at it all right gentlemen please shake hands good luck buddy. good luck Thank you. Both of these players felt flush with victory having gotten to this heads up stage, but now only one of them goes forward. Phil Locke on one side, Andy Frankenberger on the other, both from Group A. Only one space at the final table. And Mike, it's, uh, it's a format that's got some play to it, but not too much. 100,000 starting stacks, blinds go up every 21 hands, and it's best of three. It's actually a fair structure, no question about it. And the idea that you have to win two out of three so you get more chances than one, I think Great is extremely sport. fair. I don't see anybody complaining about it. We've Paul. seen time and time again, having had a chance to watch Andy Frankenberger, Mike, that uh, he just manages to confuse players by, by playing the cards in ways they wouldn't expect. Uh, and he knows that. Well, we've had a two-time and a three-time yes. WPT champ that have felt the same way, or players felt the same way about him. Alan Gehring was one, and Gus Hansen, of course, was the other, the winningest player ever in the World Poker Tour. But everybody thought he was out there when he was started playing these very unusual style and aggressive poker. And Frankenberger sort of falls in that same kind of class. Unique, different. Here he just makes the call with the nut flush draw. Now a seven comes off. Now Phil Locke who fired on the flop and got called. Check. Will he send up the white flag? He's checking here. And this shows you how aggressive Frankenberger is. Most players would just take a free card right there to try to catch that spade. Frankenberger is going to bet. That's probably the worst card for my hand. So I'm probably going to fold. The worst thing for his hand was that he got called on the flop. When it does come to the banter stakes, and not just the banter, but the efficient table talk, yeah, you have to put Phil Locke in a category all his own. Everything he says does have an intent or meaning, but figuring it out is another story. Well, Phil Locke probably has played more heads-up poker in his life than Andrew Frankenberger has, but I believe Frankenberger is more aggressive and I believe that Frankenberger will have the edge because of that. As you know, playing heads up poker, generally speaking, the most aggressive player fares the best. This pot raised by Locke on the button up to 5,000, called by Frankenberger. And we'll see. You know, right, right, just right here, leading the flop if he does that on a paired board would be quite unorthodox. Well, it's gone check, check. Just can't believe Locke would make a continuation bet with that flop. Now it's tens and deuces out there. And look at this. That's Frankenberger's going to lead out and bet with six high here. Raise 10. And Locke not believing he's got an ace in his hand because he didn't re-raise before the flop. It's going to take the pot away from him by re-raising right here. Just the men raise, but enough to get the job done. It's pretty good play here by Phil Locke, I'll tell you. Come on, it's only five more. You got a million dollars. You're out chipping me and everything. Just put it in. Several times in the Premier League up to this point when Andy Frankenberger reacts to situations like this by putting in another I mean, raise. Wouldn't I value bet an ace high? And why would I bet an ace high? Come on. You're winning. Put it in. Well, there you heard wow. it. Frankenberger put him on an ace high. He said, why would I raise with ace high? He, this, this is kind of the first big test. You, you kind of feel like Frankenberger senses something's up, wants to put the re raise well, in. Put in. At least raise and see if your read that I'm bluffing is right. Don't like let it go to the river and not know. <laughs> Appreciate you spelling out the option for me. <laughs> You're welcome. And I have to think this is very, very no, effective no, stuff from Locke. If, I, if, if, if it doesn't, if nothing else, it's. Well, he's talked oh, himself oh, out of this wow, pile. Maybe That's not. Happened. Maybe he has talked That's himself easy. out of it. Well, he might have talked too much, 10, Jesse. Was that 10 more? Give Frankenberger credit. I'm telling you. I don't know. You would never bluff, you're right. 
or would you? I might just be beating you. Be so sick if I folded in. This is a me. testosterone contest. 60, 73. 73 if I fold. This is so like a hand Frankenberger played against Matt Franklin in the Premier League up to this point. Franklin put him, thought Frankenberger was bluffing. He raised him. Frankenberger re raised. I guess I'm not supposed to value anything. This. I'm supposed to value fold. This is going to be a value fold. Just incredible play by Frankenberger here in my mind. And I think he read Locke very well there. Locke did too much talking. Then you know Look what? At this. I'm. He's drawn first go. blood. Take a break from well, Pokemon Just go. incredible that a man could take two raises Retire, on that hand with cabin, just six high. Read some books. Take it easy. <laughs> you know. And Andy Frankenberger is looking so focused right now. Has he got Locke rattled? And right here, Jesse, I think you hit the nail on the head. Nice he looks point. far more focused than Locke in this battle right now. Call. Well, it's Queen Nine versus Jack Nine here. Both players have flopped a straight draw. One needs a queen, one needs a jack. Check. Check. And it goes check, check. And now the jack comes off. Oh, boy. Phil Locke has made the nut straight here with a flush draw. Not the nut straight, but the second nut straight. These matches shallow enough. Uh, 50 starting with 50 big blinds each, and the blinds going up quite quickly. Where one kind of crucial hand where both players have something, th that can be it. Well, Frankenberger might be careful here. Got checked on the flop. He's now made two jacks. Might think he has the best hand here. Call. Well, he's made the call with the two jacks. Locke cannot lose the pot. Now he's made the flush. That may have saved Frankenberger some money. We'll see. Yeah. Believe it or not, Phil Locke did not want to make this flush. Now he's scared he could be beat if his opponent had the ace of diamonds or queen of diamonds. And look what's happening. He's Six leading out and betting right here. Locke is going to call, I'm sure, with the 9 eye flush. But if he had the straight, he'd be much more happy right now. Well, I didn't deserve to get the jack because there are no deserves in poker. So if you had the king to start, and it happens to be a diamond that's just fine because you win with those hands anyways. The ace. Well, now that he's talking it out like well, this, there's no way he's raising. There's, look, yeah, yeah, there's three cards yeah. that can be the ace, king, queen of diamonds. That's it. He thinks the guy might have one, but if he did, wouldn't yeah, he diamonds, play this hand a little more strong? Card, you would call him. Well, after all this analysis, I'm, I have no so doubt he's going to make the call. Be a value hand that you were calling with. Oh boy. Is he trying to talk trying himself into, into folding? I, I would think, think I not. Might he's trying to talk himself into calling, I guess. I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't know either. There. Just put, put the chips in there and let's go. I don't believe that. No chance he's folding this for 6,000. He has to call oh, here 99.999% of the time. Why is he wasting our time? It's the psychological game. Oh no, he had. Oh no, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's <clears> impossible. He did not. He threw that hand he away for 6,000. He did not throw it away. Go get the dirt. Bring the bring the wheelbarrow dirt in here and just bury Phil Locke right now. I may have talked myself out of that call. <coughs> I may have talked myself into a hole there. Impossible not to call that for 6,000 in my opinion. I just can't believe it. That was a strictly defensive bet that was made right there. Because Andy Frankenberger was curious as to what he had, so he bet six thousand, hoping he wouldn't get raised, even if he was beat. Mike, I'll buy the shovel. I will buy the shovel. Oh my golly! Oh. Well, I mean that's beyond the ozone. But <laughs> Phil Locke normally lives in the stratosphere somewhere, but that is just too far out there to even believe. It's just too far out 8, to even believe that. Oh boy! Had Frankenberger had. Kings with the king of diamonds with a four flush on the turn. Does he not think he would better raise the pot or with the ace of diamonds? Would he not better raise the pot? Or even with the queen of diamonds when the jack of diamonds came up where he had an open end straight draw and the flush draw. Would he not raise that? It's just incredible. What was he thinking there to fold that hand? It's impossible. I, 
I had no idea he was talking himself out of it. He he talked himself. Um, now look what he's going to do. Talk himself into playing this hand. Well, he's already bet. He's bet this. It's it's Frankenberger on the phone here. Now Frankenberger, it's down to one of two things. He's got an ace or he doesn't. Call. Well, Frankenberger's not buying. He's got the ace. He's correcting that assessment. And now the ace of spade comes off. A pretty good card for Frankenberger because it gives him a flush draw now as well. No, it's just Locke that's got the flush draw. Oh. Uh, Frankenberger, yeah, it looked like spades. Phil Locke now is a flush draw so he can check. Now, Andy may not want to get check raised out of this pot. So he may just check the two eights here. Wouldn't surprise me if he did. Yes, you give Locke a free chance to catch a spade or a queen that could beat you. But no, 10, no free cards to Locke from Andy Frankenberger. Oh. If it's not a queen or a spade, Phil Locke going to have a hard time winning this pot. And it's not. The jack of hearts comes off. Check, check. Queen they eye. could get checked down. Eight. Frankenberger going to take down yet another pot. And this is turning into a quick homicide here. Just like that, hasn't even been 11 hands, and Phil Locke has lost 60% of his original stack. Frankenberger could be up 1-0 very shortly. Well, it looks like Locke's best chance of just getting his chips out there and not thinking anymore. You know, it's almost like they're trying to write hieroglyphics with a crayon. You know, it's um, it's not that hard. I think they're playing one level above us here. <laughs> I don't know. Can't figure it all out right now, I can tell you. <laughs> now comes King, three deuce here. As you can see, Frankenberger with the best hand now with two deuces. And it goes check on the flop, and now Frankenberger's going to bet the two deuces. But now he's gotten himself beat as Locke has made two queens on the turn. Call. And that's the right play by Locke, right? Just call and see yeah. if uh, if Frankenberger wants to bet again. He can call again. There's For sure. Now Frankenberger should realize there's no hand he can beat now. Any kind of straight draw at worst, Locke is going to make two jacks. And he wisely gives it up. He knew once he got called in the turn, once the jack comes off, there's no hand he can beat. There is no hand he can beat. We are one level in, and so far, it is Andy Frankenberger who has taken the early lead. Phil Locke will need to get his act together when the blinds go up to have any chance against the Premier League Mixed Game Champion. We'll be back after the break as the playoff between Andy Frankenberger and Phil Locke continues here in Vienna. Welcome back to Season 5 of Premier League Poker from the Montesino. It's Andy Frankenberger and Phil Locke battling it out for a seat at the final table in their heads-up bout. Let's go back over to your commentators. Frankenberger, a former derivatives trader from Wall Street, took up poker as a hobby, had a little success at it, and said, you know, I'm going to try this circuit for a while. So he came out on the World Poker Tour, won like the second or third tournament that he played in, became the WPT Player of the Year, then won a World Series of Poker Bracelet, then won a Premier League title. And the guys just had incredible success in a short period of time. Phil Locke, of course, also a WPT champion. He's also, Phil Locke, he's won a, a several TV tournaments over here in Europe over the years, including the William Hill Grand Prix. He won the a Party Poker World Open, at which you made the final table as well, Mike. He's had some very good success. He's never won a World Series of Poker bracelet, though. Finished second to Johnny Chan in one tournament. Well, the first level has gone Frankenberger's way, Mike, and there hasn't been much in it. Really, everything seemed to hinge on the, the one pot, which, you know, if you, if you think about it, um, if Phil Locke had made that... River call the the stacks would be wouldn't be far from level right now. Instead, he's a nearly a three to one chip dog. Oh, Jesse, please don't go back to that hand again. I, it makes my head hurt I just know. thinking about it. <laughs> you have to put the guy on the ace king or queen of diamonds to not call there with the 
nine eye flush when the Jack Ten of Diamonds is on the board. And, you know, an aggressive player like Andy Frankenberger, if he had any one of those three cards, that pot would have been swelled up far before the river. Phil Locke is, is a guy who you feel like he has a moral obligation to donate his body to science because they need to they need to examine his brain. Well, Frankenberger raised with the ace high got three bet by Lack with the eight seven. Well, Locks Locks uh, only got, I guess. Uh, about 14 big blinds, 13 big blinds to start this hand. Um, and yet, I believe that these guys, neither oh, one of oh, wow. All I was going to say neither one of them is a real math guy when it comes to that, but Frankenberger taking it up a gear there. Well, I think they're both math guys. But there's no way I don't think he can call here with just an eight high. He's trying to compute the price. Is it right to gamble here? Answer, obviously no. Hold. So tried to make a play, but Frankenberger not afraid to come back over the top of you. He will put pressure on you, folks. I guarantee you that. Very aggressive player. Unique in ways, but he's got some special talents, too. Obviously, Frankenberger, you know, with all the success he's had, Mike, he's you say he hasn't had much experience playing heads up, but obviously he has never come second in a big event either, has he? <laughs> Frankenberger seems to be in all inner fold mode. Locke does have a few Wait, more chips than he used to. Oh, wow. So it's one more time, Locke picks up the best hand. He's trying to induce here. He is trying to induce a raise. Thanks. Well, it's another 15,000 to Frankenberger, but he's going to commit all his chips and called. So Locke in great shape to double up right here. He's got the two jacks up against the ace high. As you can see, Locke about a 70% favorite to win this pot, meaning on average he's going to win it seven times out of ten. But this will it be this one? A bit of roll reversal here if the jacks hold. Well, a four comes on the flock, but the two jacks out in front. Phil Locke just got to dodge an ace or a four, and he'll double up and take the chip lead. For Andy Frankenberger, a chance to go one nil ahead of this best of three, but it's resting on the ace or the four. Well, a ten comes off. Only an ace or a four are winning for Frankenberger. Doesn't happen as the deuce of spade comes off. Right, so and with that hand, eight. Phil Locke has 56, taken over the chip four. lead in this heads up battle. 12. Clever three bet by Phil Locke. Obviously he had the best hand, but he made it small enough that uh, obviously induced Andy to shove, although Andy with the ace and Phil only having about 15 big blinds. There's, there's not much either way in it, is there, Mike? Yeah, Frankenberger hasn't changed his emotion, his demeanor, his personality at all since losing that pot. It's going to be harder to play than the second match after we read all the bluffs we put on each other. I mean, some will be hands, some will be bluffs. We'll be going crazy. I'll be like, oh, I should have done it then. We haven't played yeah. that many flops. Right. But still, you know how it goes. Well, lock back to talking now. Feels good to have the chip lead, doesn't it, Mike? Might be a hand that Frankenberger makes a move with right here. Raise. 10,000. Oh, boy. You've got to be kidding me. Phil has definitely 20. held the card so far. This just doesn't even seem fair. How many hands this guy's picked up here? Call. Well, Frankenberger. Better Very hope dark. a queen or a jack doesn't come off. This could be it for match one if it does. Ouch. Well, it's ace jack to who's Phil Locke has flopped the best hand possible right now. Three aces. His I, opponent has flopped a pair of jacks. Call. Check. You get all the bets in the dark, kid. It must be good, huh? Good life. 
Oh boy. High check in the dark. <laughs> Trying to hang him high. I, I don't think Frankenberger is going to go check. for it on the turn. And the three hearts comes up. Six checked. Frankenberger better tiptoe lightly here. Or this first round of this heads up battle will be over. He does check a wise check by Four Frankenberger club, there. One time. Yeah, he had to put together a story that made sense, Frankenberger. And, you have. You know, I bet the dark, so you know I have some something. But then you call, so I know you have some something. And on the turn. The Glock's best play here is just to move in. Check. Because you're afraid that some something. Case his opponent had a wheel draw, he might have made three threes minutes. here. Jack good. And he might pay you off with two good. jacks. A five's good. Is King High good? <laughs> I think he's going to get paid off here. It's just a question of how much he if bets. You have to fold. If, I bet you, if I bet you have to fold, that's the main thing here. Wow. And if I'm wrong, I should just go all in just in case. All right. Tell with it. I'm all in. If I get it wrong, Six. I get it wrong. All in. If talking buried me, then talking buried me. But whatever. I can't. I can't be bothered <laughs> with the details. I'm sorry, Mike. I, I, I think he's done a great job here. Right, huh? If well, Frankenberger can figure this out, I think. then you got to tip your hat to him. He's going to make a hero call. Oh no, my all God. Frankenberger can beat is a bluff here. Essentially, that's all he can beat. Well, all of a sudden, Locke has stopped talking. Phil has if stopped you want, talking. You can allow me to add one more thing before you make your decision. It's up to you. I'll tell you one more thing if you want. He is a master, Mike. Don't forget, Phil Locke, you know, plays live cash all the time. Um, he's very experienced in talking to people at hands. And, um, I, I think, you know, his game is as strong as anybody's in that department. Yeah, you're right. He's good at talking him into calling and good at talking him into folding. What a lay down by Andy Frankenberger. He's made the right decision every time Phil Locke has done any talking. I was hoping you were going to ask for one more thing because I had, I thought, what was the perfect thing to say to get you to call, but whatever, never find out. Oh. Big lay down. That means I bet too much in the river. Without all the acting, I actually probably would have snap called you. What I'm supposed to do is just bet 15 or 12 or something. Let me hang myself percent. with my Jack Queen. <clears throat> was I first act? I could just check and let you hang yourself. Oh, I would have hung myself good. You tried like too many things at once. Like you gave well, me. Well, I tried like, the speech business when first, I was bluffing. No, first you tried the, the quick min raise, then you try, you know, the anger, all that. I'm all in. <laughs> you got to love Frankenberger, I, I'll tell I, you. I, I, yeah, I do, but, you know what, the, but Mike, I this is only the beginning of the story. <laughs> that hand where I speeched it. Well, look at I this. You, but... no, I, I, Bill I, 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 Locke I, has picked up King Jack here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was good. I don't know. Frankenberger has moved yeah. all in. Yeah. I think there's a chance that Frankenberger could be called here. Well, he, he only had 37,000. That's nine and a half big blinds. Um, Mike, it's, it's probably yeah, a call, is isn't it? If you think Frankenberger is shoving. Um, to get 39. Right. If you think he's shoving all the hands that the math guys say he should shove. I do agree. 40, I think with the chip count that you have, if you're Phil Lock, you make this call. Remember, he's still going to have 120,000. His opponent will have 80 if he plays the pot and loses it. And obviously, if he wins it, he takes down the first Must be nice of this possible three match. And then heads I up battle. Ruined myself on the other one. Got max value. First, first person that wins two freeze outs advances to the Premier League value, final yeah, the table. I, I buried myself. This I just could be leg I one if Phil Locke would make this side. call and then like, win the pot. Bet, and then if he connects, I'll get some action. Whew. I got the. I, I don't know what to do here. 30, I just, 31 or 37. Phil might 31. find a fold here 31. if he thinks that Andy Frankenberger is not shoving as often as. A little tighter than most people. I'm wrong and I win. I win it. For most people, they would just snap call this, though, Mike. That's for sure. Well, even if you're up against two sevens, two eights, you're in a race situation. The only way you're dominated here is your opponent's got ace king, ace jack, or aces or kings. Other than that, you're not in that bad of shape. I'm only supposed to be putting in 28, and it's only 31. I don't know. It's not that bad. And I might be winning. And I'll. Please don't yell at me if I slow rolled you. Because some people are going to think, eh, your head's up. You it's a king queen. What are you going to do? No, king jack. No, sorry. Okay, ace six. Okay. Okay, <laughs> right now, Frankenberger out in front with the ace high. You're still a favorite, but it's only wrong by three chips, so whatever. I don't know. Come on. 
Oh, let me get through. Well, Phil oh. Locke holding his breath, knows he'll take the first of this three heat battle, potentially three heat, wow. and a king comes right on don't the flop. Me, don't make me sweat it. Hit me on the turn. Come on. Phil Locke out in front with two kings right now. Oh, he's got one in there. I just don't have to wait till the river. There's even bad numbers like, like the first time he hadn't had the best the hand, but he's out flopped his opponent. It's a question if he has to sweat till the river. Well, a seven comes on the turn. Yeah, We're down to the river. the river. Andy Frankenberger must wow. catch an ace to win this Six pot. Rounds. Otherwise, yeah. the first round of the heads up battle goes to Phil Locke. Wow. Well, it's it, a three. Wow. Fails one so nil. Sick. So sick. Sorry, buddy. That was sick. And the talking sick. has started. Mike, what we what Wait, we originally again. thought uh, looked like a big Frank that Frankenberger was going to have this match all in his favor. Here. Now that Phil Locke's got him to open up stacks. his mouth, and he's ahead one, one nothing. Stacks. It could be very quick. I think Frankenberger played that round very well. I really yes. do believe that. Right. He did. He just got a little bit unlucky. Nothing you can do Sounds about like it. But time. as yeah, far as the play goes, I don't think he made any mistakes. It's crunch time for Andy Frankenberger here in Vienna. If he loses the next heads up match, he is out of the Premier League and Phil Locke will advance onto the final table. We have reached the playoff stage of the Party Poker Premier League. There are still two seats left at the final table and battling it out for one of those seats is Andy Frankenberger and Phil Locke. They are playing best out of three and Locke currently leads by one match. I would love to make the final table. Um, firstly, it's a huge bubble. I mean, the value of a seat at the final table is like 87K. Um, so the second place is zero today. So that's a big bubble. Beyond that, I played against some really, really tough players, and it would mean a lot to me to make uh, the final table and to compete against um, the other four from the other heat who I haven't played against and to make a, a run at my second uh, consecutive championship of the Premier League. That would just be awesome. I'm actually not familiar with Andy's heads up game at all. This is the first time I've ever played with him. In fact, I actually feel quite fortunate that uh, I have a sub slightly substantial amount of heads-up experience in both the way computers think about the game and from a limit paradigm and from heads-up paradigm. I've, I, you know, I've played a lot of heads-up. I love it. Heads-up is fun. In fact, I think uh, heads-up in some ways is like the most pure form of poker. Glasses on my flips. This on is flips. a short oh, format, like best of three. <laughs> and getting that first match in the bag, a exactly huge advantage. Up that little crack above really does glasses. take pressure off of you. And it's all about sealing that crack. No one, even if you lose the next round, you still have a chance to get through. So pressure right now, the, certainly on Frankenberger, no doubt about it. Like you said, Mike, Frankenberger's played very well so far. I the power. On the on the other side, I I just believe that getting into a conversation with Phil Locke, net, net. this is not his game. This is what Phil Locke wants. Well, here we go. Frankenberger out in front here with two fives, but getting raised here by Phil Locke with just King High. So this then another chance. Frankenberger's decision making has been brilliant. We saw him out Duke Locke really early on in Heat 1 with the raise, re raise, re re raise. And this is the second time now Locke's bluffing him. He's let yeah. this one go. He's let it go because it doesn't matter what comes off on the turn. If Locke continues to apply pressure to him, he's not going to be able to stand it. If a hard came off, if a straight card came off, or if nothing came off and Locke bet at the pot, would have been sick when you checked Frankenberger's in a very tough in. spot there. Yeah. Frankenberger <laughs> has not set a foot wrong during this heads up, yet he trails 1-0 for Phil Locke now. The chance to try and take a shot to close it out, go to that final table of Premier League Poker 5. Yeah, the heads up battles are best two out of three, so you must win twice to advance to the final. Now Frankenberger now making a pair of tens. He's got tens and sixes. He's going to take a little bet at it right here. Just can't see Phil Locke doing too much here after checking the flop. And doesn't have anything invested in this pot. Why do you need to get involved when you're the chip leader and you got a 1 0 lead? And I kind of obviously thinking the same way. Probably should just fold it. 
Just hold it, mate. Ten, six, six, Jack. There's Maybe two didn't. flush draws. Throw it away. Well, you, now that he started talking and lifted his draw. cards up, you, you feel like he's folding 100% of the time. Yeah. You know? what you see how they match? Anytime somebody picks their cards up off the table, 99.9% .9 of the time they're folding. Two flush draws is not as good as one in no limit hold'em. That's rule number one. Because by then, you don't have the five of all the same suit to make the flush. So you're always trapped. More options, but less closures. Will he ever write a book, Jesse? Will he ever write a book? That's my question, Jesse. Uh, Kara Scott, the presenter here, she said she was eating, she told me this morning that she was eating lunch uh, alongside Phil Locke a couple days ago, and Phil managed to give a 20-minute sermon on the attributes of the potato. <laughs> she said <laughs> half, oh, half the restaurant was gathered around here in Vienna listening to him talk about the potato. Um, oh, Andy Black would have loved to have been there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Big hand here. Big hand. Yeah, we're going to see some action here. Phil Locke has a pair and a flush draw. Frankenberger has the best hand right now with top pair and a straight draw. I look for all the money to be going in right here, right now on the flop. And and this is a great gambling hand for Phil because he's ahead 1-0, Mike, right? He knows he can't be far behind. Well, anytime you've got a pair in a flush draw, yeah. you're going with the hand. I don't care how much your opponent raises you. That's right. You're going to play the pot. That's right. You either got the best hand or the best draw. You have one of the two. Look, how, well, he, he's made he's made the, the super big raise. I mean, he has just, he shoved here, basically. Interesting. He's basically set Frankenberger in 5,000 up to 63. It's really interesting. And Andy's going to have a think about it. How should Andy yeah. think about this? Well, I think he'll sort it out and make the call. Four, seven of hearts? I think he'll that put him on a four, year. maybe a four, five in this situation, or possibly two hearts on the flush draw. You've got the two sixes. You know, it's virtually a coin flip mathematically as to who will win this pot in terms of what they got right now but I just don't see Andy giving this hand up. So you're you're either going with your set or you're going with your flush draw. I think you're going with your flush draw. That's Boy. why I'm still tanking here. He's, he's just I mean he is quite a good reader of of hands and cards think, Andy Frankenberg. He really is. Am I allowed, hey am I allowed, I'm allowed to tell him that I'm feeling quite lucky right. And I guess sir. that's I'm the answer lucky, Mike. Sir. Uh, if Phil Locke turned his cards over, would Andy right, Frankenberger yeah. call? You know, you, I think it's still a coin like flip. It's 50 50, but because there's extra say, value in the pot already, already yes, yes, he's supposed to call. In other words, if there's no money in the pot and it's 50 50, he's not supposed to call. But because he's getting more money in the pot than he has to put in, yes, it favors him to call. But on the other hand, forget the math. You know, if you call and play and lose this pot, you're out. You don't advance to the final table. You're out of the Premier League, and that's disappointing. If you think your chances are better to fold this hand and just come back, you still have a lot of chips. You still got 80 some thousand in chips. Plenty of chips to play with, so just wait for a better spot. Will he find a better spot, Mike? He could easily find a better spot, yes. No question about it. And he does lay it down. Big fold. Andy Frankenberger figured well, out what Phil Locke right had and still fold. If I get a show these in the future, I get an, you owe these me one. And if I ever time I want, I just say that's the one I want to see. I'll give if you this you show one. show me now, I'll show you one I want to show you. No, it has to be one that I, that I picked. No, no, because this is an interesting hand, you know? I know what you had. It's okay. I know you know. I know you know. That's why I was trying to show it to you as in, and to get something that, you know, trade low, collect high, right? That's the trader axiom. Whatever, bro. So I flopped the nuts. Whatever. We'll Even if he had a flush draw with two over cards, it's the same thing. Then Phil Locke would have been even more of a favorite. So he put him on the you flush can't draw. Guy when he's flopping thought he nuts. might have two over cards. Or close. Knew to the it. math was in the favor of Phil Locke. Opted to wait for a better spot. Andy Frankenberg. Gutsy, gutsy stuff. Not getting desperate yet. Trying to give himself the best oh, shot to win this know. Premier League. Sure. It was, was dropped that and then back? major pause and then the rest. That's a call. You're right. I did that it wrong. I did that in the earlier heat too. Jesse, what I did was I did this. I took out the checkers and I 
like in a cash game, how you cut it, the call, and then the yeah, raise? Yeah, that's a string for sure. Because I, I gain a little too much in these cash games. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's Mike. Uh, I'm, Christian, I'm the, the tournament director, is. Uh, that's twice. He has I'm seen everything. Professional, I can't and if, if he calls, I, I didn't see it, but obviously, the, world. the pl it's players it. have a lot of respect for both him and yeah, Matt Savage. And well, Phil Locke says, I know how to raise, but that was an improper raise. It for sure was a string bet. I agree with Frankenberger there. Yeah. You can't put one chip in and have more in your hand three, and throw them out in the pot later. Checkers. That's what he did. Now, it may go in the cash games that he plays in, but technically, it's a violation. Well, <laughs> so Phil called that, that string out. bet on himself. <laughs> Raise $7. I have a Here brittle hand. Brittle, like peanut brittle. Tastes good before the flop. <laughs> Crickly and foldable. After the flop. Well, he's going out here. A I nice raise here like by Frankenberger with just two threes. Things where I might have the best hand, but I can't call. Take it from me. I can't let it go. <laughs> it was so pretty. <laughs> I was suited too, kid. All suited. <laughs> suited, dude. I'll tell you, you got to love watching the guy, even if he does make you laugh. You got to admit that. I mean, and he laughed at himself as much or more than anybody. You know, it's not like you're picking on Phil Locke or you're I'm laughing up. at him. You're laughing with the guy Sagan, because he himself really laughs at himself Take more than anybody. Maybe laughing with him and also, Mike, Phil Locke's I mean, brand of humor is 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 good spirited. Uh, there Correct. are and, and you know, you know who they are. We all know who they are. Uh, poker players who can be very antagonistic towards their opponent. And, uh, you know, it can get a little I'm brutal out there, but race. Phil's not like that. Most of the time, he's making fun of himself, isn't he? Oh, kid. Would you have called if I got my race through when I had, when it came 9 3 It's Probably still got not, the right? same intention, though. You Just rattle something. your opponent. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Wow. Phil Locke calls the raise and flops three nines here. Wow. Well, Frankenberger going to make the continuation bet for 5,000. Well, just a question of how much he can get off Frankenberger, and he's been very good reading Phil. And we'll see if the alarm bells go. And when a guy calls oh, you, boy. oh, just more trouble. Oh, boy. That is extreme trouble for Frankenberger. How lucky is Phil Locke here? He flopped three nines. Now, all of a sudden, an ace comes on the turn, and he leads out and bets. And whatever Frankenberger puts in there is going to be doom unless an ace pops off. I mean, it's just a perfect situation for Frankenberger to go broke. Yep. And really, oh, now, anything else. He's broke for sure now. That's the next worst card to come off the 10. He's now made aces and 10s. All in. Well, it's all in and called, and goodbye, Frankenberger. It's, it's Frankenberger who went all in. Yeah. I call. Yeah, Nine. Phil Locke is going to win this pot with three nines. That's it. I it's mean, over. Frankenberger, tough luck. He got it just cold deck there. Absolutely cooler, well, Mike. Well, Six. first the ace, and then the ten came off. Bang, bang, brutal, brutal. I had to call. As Meatloaf said, oh. two out of three ain't bad, and Thanks that's so exactly what Phil Locke has done. I I really do have to he hit all the, the cards. He's going to the Premier League right. Poker that's Five final. Time. And one time at ace 90, all in all, five, was, destiny on the I side of Phil Locke. Like, I didn't we'll see, see I, him I at was, the like, final. Doing the math wrong and I got, like, Our mixed game champion, unfortunately, not going to make it into the final. But sometimes the cards just go against you. How did you feel about the way you played? Um, I thought I played pretty well, but I didn't really know that until uh, Mike Sesson came over and told me that uh, I didn't really make any mistakes out there. So that's nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make me feel too much better about uh, the excitement of making another final table, but. Uh, but it's nice to hear that uh, that I actually played it pretty well. I did some good stuff here and there, but I mean, six thousand to get twenty-four thousand folding the like essential nuts, the nine of diamonds, because it's like he has to have what is he value? But it was like so. But you get sometimes in poker, your brain just goes into little circles, and you can't. It's like a little coming down the stream. There's a little leaf, and it just gets trapped in the little side eddy, and just stays there. And you can't, you're like, what are you doing over there, Leaf? There's the river. It's all the sun and whatever. And then he wilts away and dies. And you're always afraid of that. Like, and so that was an example of where my brain got trapped in a little circular loop of, and I get stuff wrong all the time, you know? And uh, that's but why poker's fun. It is. It's poker's fun. And you managed to get yourself out of that eddy and all oh the way God, right. to the final table. You did. And you I had all the way to the final table. How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> Well, happens. you're going to be at the final table now, so I can tell that you're stoked. I'm going <laughs> to let you go prepare. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs>
after the break, the second playoff gets underway as Tom Dwan and Yevgeny Timoshenko battle it out here in Vienna. We're about to get the second heads-up playoff underway for the last seat at the final table for the Premier League main event. Evgeny Timoshenko and Tom Dwan are going heads-up. Tom, when you left the last heat, you seemed surprised at the way that Daniel was playing. A little bit frustrated. Have you managed to forgive him yet? Uh, I don't think there's anything to be forgiven. I was just tilted because I, I thought he played bad and it happened to cost me money. Uh, I think a, a few people did that in the last heat. And unfortunately, it happened to cost me most of the times. But... Uh, Whatever, at least, at least I got in here to the heads up. Hopefully I win. And Yevgeny, when you left the last heat, you also seemed a little bit tilted, a little bit frustrated. You feeling better now? I definitely feel a lot better now. I, I think my mistake was uh, not realizing a few of the points dynamics going on until a little, it was a little too late. Uh, but I, I feel fine now, and hopefully I can, uh, can take this thing down. Well, no points to be considered here. It's a straight heads up match. Gentlemen, please shake hands. Good luck, buddy. And best of luck. Hope one of us wins the final. Yep. <laughs> Seven seats at the final table of Premier League Poker 5 have been determined. The eighth player will come from these. How can you split them? Tom Dwan and Yevgeny Timoshenko. And Mike, you just pray that the skill, the poker skill and class that these two players have is going to shine through in this match. Well, I have no doubts that it will. These are two of the premier minds in the poker world, no question about it. Really going to be a fun, exciting match to watch. Like, it's so the hard. The of, format uh, doesn't allow for commodity. much, like, but are these are two guys that will try and like put as much play in this best of three like heads-up match as they can. Could not be split yeah, after yeah, four I, I league feel, matches, I, I feel the same way. and now only one of them could go to the final table. How do you handicap this, Mike? Well, you handicap it in my mind by giving the aggressor a slight advantage here, and in my mind that will be Tom Dwan. Every poker table he plays at, cash games, tournaments, he is the table captain. Big hand right away. And Yevgeny raising pre-flop to 5,000. Tom Dwan electing to just call. Some players would have re-raised there. I think Tom's trying to, to play as much post-flop as possible, Mike. Well, great flop for Tamashenko. He's out in front with two jacks now. And we'll see how Tom Dwan wants to play it. Well, folks, get used to those eyes. You'll see a lot of that in this match. Tom Dwan stares you down as much as anybody in poker. I don't think anybody's got the eyes of Phil Ivey, but Tom Dwan, he feels like he's looking right through your soul when you're playing against him, I promise you. He's made a big bet here, Mike, 8 into 10. It's the kind of bet, I guess, where Tim Oshenko in his mind is going to have a lot of trouble continuing unless he, he beats the ace nine for sure. So I, I guess he'll get the information right here. I mean, Tim Oshenko has a massive hand, doesn't he? Yeah, he's never getting away from this hand. Don't worry about it. He's definitely going to play this pot. He just calls, though. Maybe against a super aggressive player like Adwan, that's the proper strategy. Just let him keep firing. That won't be one of the cards that Timoshenko is delighted to see. Five is definitely in Dwan's range right now. Uh, Dwan knows the only hand he can beat right now is a straight draw. That's why he's checking here. And from watching these, these guys um, in the Premier League, a lot of them choose to check behind here with a hand like Timoshenko's, but he's going to bet it. About 16. Yeah. One bad thing about this match between these two players, in my mind, is both are some of the most liberate players that you'll ever play with. They both take, seems like forever sometimes, to act on their hand. They just wait and wait and wait and wait and look at you and then finally make a bet. But I do think they're very slow players, both of them. Difficult to see Dwan doing anything here but just pass the hand, Mike. He's gotten called for a big bet on the flop. Well, Dwan likes to fight for a lot of pots. Oh, my gosh. He may check raise. And he's made the call with just ace high. So, in my mind, he's putting him on the flush draw. I mean, the straight draw. And now the board pairs jacks. Just a great card for Timoshenko. Check. He's now got jacks full of fives. Yeah, I, I think Timoshenko has fooled here, Dwan, a little bit by betting on the turn. 
Well, he must have fooled him because if Dwan puts him on the straight draw, he's liable to pay him off on the river with just the ace high. And, you, you know, these players barely have a pot bet left. I mean, you know, for Timoshenko, going all in here is not too big a bet. This now, pot's big. Now look at the look in his face. He looks like he's worried here. The guy's got jacks full. Most people would just insta bet it, and the other guy would insta fold. But he just takes a long time before every decision he makes, whether he's got a big hand or not. And I told you, Dwan liable to pay him off with ace high here, thinking the Jackson fives with the ace kicker are the best hand. Timoshenko frozen posture right now. And this potential to put Dwan in a very tough spot. He's called. Well, he's called. He put him on the straight draw. He's going to see Jacks full. Dwan just thinks most players would have raised when they made Jacks on the flop. Tamashenko just called him when he let out and bet the flop. That's what led him astray and cost him the money. Just like snap, Timoshenko opens up a three to one chip lead. Well, one of the rules of poker is you want to try to camouflage the strength of your hand at every opportunity. Timoshenko did it there and it paid off for him. And Dwan will be fighting from behind in the first leg of this best of three series. And he just limps in and calls with two deuces on the button. Check. And look at this. Timoshenko does not raise with an ace high, again, camouflaging the strength of his hand. Had Dwan raised or had Timoshenko raised, money could have all gotten in pre-flop. Instead, there's only 4K in there. Well, let's come Jack 10-8. Timoshenko has flopped two eights. Check. But because they're middling cards and Dwan wasn't re-raised before the flop, he thinks that flop might have hit him, and indeed it did. So a good feel right here by Dwan not to bet. Here's another case where you might better be careful about betting. Check. Well, again, it's gone check, check. Now the board pairs kings. Timoshenko's got a decision now. He, this, is a, this is a very a thin great, value bet, isn't it's it? It's a great value bet right here. He knows Dwan would have bet had he had tens or jacks. He might put him on ace high here. May put him on an under pair. A great value bet by Temashenko. And it looks like he's going to get paid off. Dwan kind of jokes sometimes that he doesn't really enjoy folding hands. Right now, Timoshenko picking up the best of it. And with Tom not, to, not folding, it's going to be costly. And on the other hand, if he check oh, raise he, here, he might win a big pot. Well, Dwan makes the call and loses yet again. But what about that bet by Tamashenko? It shows you the kind of poker talent this guy's got. He knows where he's at. Squeezing water out of a dish towel. All of it. Yeah. Only been three hands, and Timoshenko's made them count. He's one of those people who I think the viewers love to watch on TV. He's had a lot of success in the TV tournaments. That said, Mike, Timoshenko has, I believe, a little bit of unfinished business when it comes to the Premier League. He bubbled the, the final table in Premier League Poker 4, uh, making a very controversial play in the last heat. And I know he's here to, to right that wrong. And the flop comes. 10, Check. 9, 5. Check. Both players have got two tens. Can't see him getting away from this. And tens and threes. Temashenko has outflopped him on the turn. He now has the best hand with tens and threes. Only way Dwan's going to be able to win this pot is to catch a four. He would split it if a nine or a five came up, but I think Dwan is going to be in dire straits right here. He could go for the rest of his stack real easy it, with it, top pair. There's several ways this plays where Dwan ends up getting his entire stack in. Mike, he's only got 43,000 back. If he believes his hand is best and he, he doesn't have any reason to think otherwise, he might want to get it in. Raise all in. Well, okay. here you go. He's called it. 
As we said, Dwan needs to catch a four to win the pot. He'll split the pot if a nine or a five comes up. Otherwise, round number one is going to go to Tamashenko very quickly. It's taking no time at all. Here's the river. It's an eight, and that's going to do it for round one. Yevgeny Tamashenko taking down Tom Dwan very quickly. He looks focused. A man on a mission, and for Tom Dwan, a bit of a cooler there. And now he's fighting from behind. The pressure is on for Tom Dwan after the break in this Premier League playoff. Welcome back. We're in Vienna for this season's Premier League poker, and tonight it's the playoffs. It's Tom Dwan and Yevgeny Timoshenko battling it out for that last seat. Over to your commentators, Jesse May and Mike Sexton. Well, I think you'd agree with me, Mike, that the Premier League has been better to have having both these players as a part of it. It's a shame we have to lose one, but right now Yevgeny has got pole position for the final table. Well, indeed he does. He won round one. I thought Dwan got coolered on the last hand, of course, but earlier in that match he lost a fair amount of money with ace nine when I didn't think he had to, but nevertheless. Oh, boy. Well, this could be the pot that Dwan's been waiting for. He's flopped three deuces here, but his opponent has aces up. And look at this. Dwan not slow playing. He is going to bet, and he is hoping his opponent makes a call with the two aces. One of the things I, I love about Dwan is, and we saw it in the fourth match, uh, he takes a balance, he tries to take a balanced approach the way he plays, Mike. He tries to play the same way with his bluffs, the same way with his good hands. It's really hard to decide what he's got. Well, he loved getting called right there because now he knows Tamashenko's got an ace. And he's certainly going to bet again here. Just a matter of how much does he want to bet for Timoshenko to keep calling him. He didn't raise pre-flop, so you're not going to put him on an ace and a big kicker. You're going to put him on a hand just about like this, ace seven, ace eight. So you want to bet an amount that you're going to get action with. And he bets 21,000. Well, this decision time for Timoshenko, Mike, if he calls here, he pretty much has to call up. He doesn't have to, but generally he'd be calling the river if a heart doesn't come down. Uh, you think there's any way he gets away from this? Is there any indication he can? Well, only because it's Tom Dwan, it's very difficult to get away from this hand because Dwan could be betting on air very easily here. And the call here will set up a possible pot size all in on the river. Both these players have less than 68,000 back, which is what's in the pot. This think, match could be leveled. Well, I think Dwan is supposed to move in right here. It would look like a bluff. This the decision. Dwan has to put Timoshenko on a hand and then figure out the most he'll be willing to pay with it. And he is moving all in. He's put Tamashenko on an ace. And he said, the guy paid me off on the flop. He paid me off on the turn. Maybe he'll pay me off on the river. And now if you're sitting in Tamashenko's seat, all you can beat is a bluff here. I don't know how he figures it out. I, I mean, Well, how? one way you can figure it out is, would the guy be bluffing his last chips off when if he loses this pot, he's out of the Premier League? That's another reason to fold in my mind. If he's got that kind of heart, he deserves to win this pot. Would he bluff his last money off in this situation? Tamashenko figured it out. Wow. No, he would not. That's good. He's good. Mike. That's why the small bet might have been better. He's <laughs> Timoshenko is good. He called him off on the turn, but the river chips did not follow. And Timoshenko still alive in this second heat for Tom Dwan. An opportunity to level the scores goes by the door. Well, maybe a $25,000 bet would have been the answer right there. 35000 there. But maybe not. Could have been a lot more exciting for me. That right there, yeah. Mike, that could be the difference in the match. Tim Oshenko getting another chance in this second heat. 
Well, he's got enough chips to come back. Recognize if he wins a pot, he will have the chip lead in this heads up battle. He knows that. He understands it. The risk versus reward wasn't worth it to him being up 1 0. That would have tied the match had he made that call and lost that pot. Timoshenko has found an ace in the big blind and chosen not to raise. It's chosen not to re raise, pardon me. Flop comes Jack, seven deuce with two clubs. Well, it goes checked by Timoshenko. Will Dwan make the continuation bet? He has the very worst hand possible you could have right now. There is no hand that Timoshenko could be holding that wouldn't beat Dwan's as the cards lie. I feel but like Tom is going to bet Mike for, uh, in the same reason. You know, he's going to be betting his best hands and his worst hands, if you know what I mean. Well, exactly right. He picks up the pot by doing so. So Timoshenko losing that pot because he didn't take the lead, as we say. He didn't re-raise before the flop. Didn't bet on the flop. And Dwan taking it down with aggression. Well, I always said to be the best and succeed at the highest levels of poker, you have to have what I call an, a natural ability, sort of like an athlete. I don't care how much you practice golf, you're never going to make the PGA Tour if you don't have some natural ability. Same thing with any major sport. Doesn't matter what it is. I believe the same holds true for poker. I believe the great players have an innate ability to read opponents better, to put players on a hand, to understand the game better. And I believe that's sort of a natural ability as well as hard work, like you said. Big flop here for Dwan from the big blind. And Timoshenko loved his hand at the start. We'll see if this develops. Well, both players check. Dwan now has Kings full. If Dwan feels like Timoshenko has the kind of hand he does, which is a hand with showdown value, but you might not be interested in betting. It's it's important that Dwan. I was going to say well, thinks about getting money in the pot, and uh, he's out thunk me. He's done this app exactly right, hasn't he? Well, Dwan has checked. Timoshenko has bet, thinking his ace high is the best hand. The man's checked twice on the flop and on the turn. Does he really have any of that? You almost think Dwan has to raise it if he has a chance to get all the money, but he just calls. Does not raise. I just can't see him checking here. Because Timacheco has an ace high, he could easily check this hand down, and that's what's going to happen. Uh -huh. I win. You win. Yeah, that's good. I think. <laughs> yeah, you. Well, I'm a little surprised that Dwan wouldn't at least worry, make some kind of bet on the river there. So if he had a drawing hand, he might get paid off with ace high. <laughs> and if, in case, Timoshenko had second pair, he could well make a lot of money in that hand the way it was played. He's gone all in, Tom Dwan. I call. And you've got he's found a hand to call with. Well, here we go. Dwan's got the 10 3 of spade. Timoshenko will definitely have a better hand than that. Good luck. Uh, King nine, Brad, ace nine. You can only slide so far in barbed wire and got picked off here by Temeshenko on this hand, but let's see if we can get lucky and win the pot. Comes seven, four, deuce. Dwan now looking for a 10 or a three to take the lead. To catch two runners to make a straight, but got to have help. There's the 10. He's caught the dream card on the turn. Temeshenko must catch an ace on the river. Otherwise, we're going to be even at one heat apiece. And there we are. Levels. One all between Timoshenko and Dwan. They're going to be playing the rubber match now, Mike. Well, folks, that's why you move all in on the button with a 10-3. A, you can pick up the pot without having to gamble, and B, you can outdraw your opponent and win the money and win the heat. That's what Dwan did there. It's crunch time for Yevgeny Timoshenko and Tom Dwan. The winner of the next heads up bout will go through to the final. I would really like to make the final table. This is a very prestigious tournament. I'm playing against 15 of the world's best. I had a very poor showing in the previous Premier League, so 
stakes. For me to redeem my performance last year, that would be really nice. It's a pretty big stakes heads-up match. It's like you're playing a $80,000, you know, sit and go or whatever. So obviously I'd like to win. I'm going to try to, and uh, hopefully I do. It's one game each for Yevgeny and Tom, and this is the deciding match to find out who will fill that last spot on the Premier League main event final table. Over to your commentary team of Jesse May and Mike Sexton. They were playing for all the marbles before, Mike, but now all the marbles are in a jar, and let's spill them out. They're going to be sliding everywhere. Well, this is sudden death, as we say right now. Whoever wins this advances to the final, plain and simple. One heat apiece. Look, make it straight. That's true. It's four or five. For two right, guys who should have all the pressure in the world on them, Mike, it, it, it looks like they're just playing Sunday kitchen table poker. As far as the chat goes, but now Duan goes serious when a hand starts, doesn't he? Well, he should be serious here. He's got a pair of sevens. Just calls, does not raise there with two sevens. I am very surprised by that because now he could be bet out of this pot. Pairs are strong in heads up poker. I think you have to re raise when you get them. Well, Tamashenko checks. And he bet right there. He might have won that pot. Now six comes off. So this gives an open end straight draw to Dwan as well. I don't see him getting away from this hand now. The question is is he going to bet? Or just check it again. Just think about the dynamics of. Notice he reaches for chips and then looks at his opponent and stares at him That's before he puts the out. chips in the pot. Just to get a feel if the guy's going to play the hand. And you have Getty looking right back at him. It's almost like they're teasing each other a little bit. Yet Getty never intended to call. Checked. Check called, could have checked raised, bet, bet called, could have bet shoved. Couldn't bet ball. Not a lot of options. That is a lot of options. It is. Those are, I'm like not lying. Those were those are all in the playbook. They're all possible. I was flipping through them. It's hard, but they ten of diamonds. Pretty big hand playing heads up poker, no doubt about it. The men raise he makes. And Dwan is going to look him up. So we're going to have a flop here. Dwan only has a 7 5, but getting 3 to 1 on his money wants to see a flop. The flop is a 6 deuce. Nice flop for Timoshenko as he's flopped two aces. We'll see if this is over or if Dwan wants more. Well, this would not be the time to pull the trigger, Mr. Tom Dwan, but. And if he wants to make a play, is he better off calling to try and make a play on a later street or raising? Well, he's picking up those chips again, and this time he is raising. 14. He has check raised. Tamashenko says to himself, this guy have a flush draw. Could he have really flopped aces up? Or three deuces here. Is it possible my hand is beat? It is possible, but I don't see him getting away from this hand. I don't think so either, Mike. And the question is, does Timoshenko feel like if he's up against a draw that he wants to get money in now? Or if there's a chance that Tom Dwan is bluffing, do you just call and let him bluff off his stack? Well, it's a good question. And honestly, I'm not sure of the answer here right now. Let's see what Timoshenko does. Call. He just calls, just like you said, in case he's bluffing. He wants him to continue to bluff. The heart comes up or something, it'll freeze him though, perhaps. Now a king comes off. That is not going to scare Timoshenko, believe it or not, that card. No, I, I, I think Timoshenko is prepared for his stack here. And, you know, there is there is no indication right now that Tom Dwan's not going to make him go for it. One but, thing about Dwan, he doesn't just make those one barrel bluffs, Mike. Well, he may wave the white flag against this particular player. That's exactly what he's done. The flag has now gone up, I guess. Check. Dwan does check. But so does Timo. He's waving the flag. Now a nine comes off. 
Going to give Dwan one more chance to bluff at it. As you said, trying to maintain pot size right here. But Dwan knows he cannot win by checking. And so this is uh, really him giving up on the pot now. If he checks, he just waves the flag and going to save his 85,000 to continue to play with. He's probably almost hoping Temeshenko bets here so he doesn't have to show this hand down. That, that, that might be. Where he can just give up the pot. <laughs> or Temeshenko doesn't know he doesn't have anything. Check. But it's gone check, high. check. Juan proudly high. says seven high. Seven but it's high. not going to win the pot. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I really like the way both players played that pot. Duan gave himself a chance to win it by check raising on the flop. Once he got called, he put on the brakes, didn't lose any more money in that pot. Temeshenko kept down the side of the pot just in case his ace-10 wasn't good. He didn't want to go for all his chips there. Good <laughs> poker here. You're absolutely right. That was the longest river check against a seven high I've ever seen, though, I do have to say. <laughs> oh, man. Juan with the jack eight of spade outgunned again by Temeshenko's king nine of spades. So for Dwan's sake you better hope spades does not come up. He's silently rooting for him now but it'll be tapioca pudding if they come up. Well <laughs> flop comes nine seven deuce Temeshenko has flopped top pair and checks. Juan does have the gut shot straight draw could take the free card off here doesn't have a diamond in his hand. But he's the kind of guy that's going to make a continuation. Bet. 8, 8000. Now this play is not going to work now because Temeshenko's flop top pair. But in case Temeshenko had King 10 or King Jack he could easily get away from this hand. Unfortunately for Juan. He's got top pair now. You're fearful. The Dwan may have a diamond that he's drawing to a flush here. That's why I think if you're Temeshenko, I don't know that you just call in this spot because you could be better out of this pot if a diamond comes off. But again, Temeshenko trying to keep the pot small. So he just makes the call. Yeah, a lot of play still left, especially now. Well, there you go. There is the diamond. And Temeshenko's put himself in a position that he could possibly lose this pot. Tom has to think hard about this because even though obviously he knows he can't win by betting Mike um, does he have to commit to betting twice now uh, what what diamonds would he bet now is it better to try and represent the diamond on the river or, or, you know I think in, in Tom's mind there are a lot of diamonds he would check back on the turn to bet the river well he does check and now a queen comes off. And because of that check I believe Temeshenko is going to pay him off and win this pot even if Dwan tries to bluff on the river here. Both players fearful their opponents got a diamond so both playing carefully now. Yeah this is going to be very interesting. First of all what does Timoshenko want to do Mike. Check. And now yeah, for Tom to decide. Check. Yeah. And he's got the two nines. It's on here, sir. Bad read. Well, he says bad read. Dwan thought Temeshenko made the flush on the turn. That's why he didn't bet. He knows now, had he bet the turn in the river, good chance he could have won that pot. And he doesn't like to make errors at the poker game. He is berating himself right there for not betting. But in truth, many players would check there, fearful your opponent had a flush. Well, it's a major pot right there. The swing now. Timoshenko in this final match. Mike having a nearly a two to one lead. Look at the stats, though. Anything surprise you? Uh, Timoshenko's three bet percentage is double Tom Dwan's. Well, neither player three bet very much. Seems like both of them are very happy to keep the pot small until oh, we see a flop. And that's nice. what they're doing. Timoshenko picking up ace oh. high here. Got the ace three of spade. Again, makes the minimum raise. And Tom Dwan still thinking about that last hand. Why didn't I take one more shell and fire at that pot? How could he call me with a pair when it looked like I might have a flush? In the meantime, he's got diamonds this time. 
Jack eight of diamonds and he's saying to himself why didn't I have one of those last time. It's the difference Mike that pot right there. Uh, if you ship those chips from Timoshenko to Duan they'd be exactly level instead Duan now. Oh my gosh not only is he uh, two to one down but every chance there could be a lot of chips in this pot. Well Duan has second pair here. Timoshenko has the nut flush draw the ace high flush draw. I'll be shocked if he just doesn't get it in right here right now. Just take a chance on ending this thing right here. A may not get called and B if he does he's got a big draw on in. Cool. Well I am surprised. Timoshenko trying to keep the pot small even though a possible flush is out there. Now the board pairs Queens. That's actually a good card in my opinion Check. for Tom Dwan because he has second pair now. His opponent didn't raise him on the flop. Meaning you wouldn't put him on top pair so. I think Dwan is going to pay off a bet in case Timoshenko starts to go to war now. Timoshenko's knuckled it back so. Well now a 10 comes off. Timoshenko's got the kind of hand an ace high that you might want to check down here but. Dwan is going to win this pot. I'd be surprised if he could get bet out of this pot now. Check. And unfortunately for Timoshenko, you know, any draws that Tom called with, straight draws, things like that, they got there with that 10. Check. Yep, he's going to check it down. Unbelievable. Timoshenko saved his he's chips good. one more time here. Where Dwan could have doubled up there, perhaps. So Dwan taking down that pot with queens and jacks on the shop. to close the gap it's hard, it's hard to on Tamashenko. Join us after the break to find out who wins a seat at the final table and whose Premier League journey is over. Still 70,000 for Tom Dwan. He needs 200. And so does Yevgeny Timoshenko to progress to the final table of Premier League Poker 5. Yep, 200,000 in chips right here could lead it to 500,000 in real money if you win the Premier League final table. Well, he can see Timoshenko playing very tight. He's raising the men raise on the button and I think Dwan's going to start making more of that play. And again Timoshenko with the best hand pre flop. Here it's Queen Eight of Clubs versus Nine Four Clubs. Across he's got daggers in his eyes, doesn't he? Well, he's going to make the call here. And by making the call here, if you're going to check and then give it up on your opponent bets, that's not winning poker. And here's a perfect example of it a seven deuce deuce. No help to either player. Check. Temashinko checking. Surely Dwan will make a continuation bet on this flop, especially with the hand he has. Taking a long time. Do you think, Mike, uh, also delayed continuation might happen? Sometimes this, people think that's more powerful. This is a normal continuation yep. for Dwan. If he had aces here, he would take the same amount of time to make this bet. Right. About 13. And a nice continuation bet. And that's the problem. If you're Tamashenko or any player for that matter, if you call a raise pre flop and then on with the flop, you know your opponent's going to make the continuation bet. You just can't keep affording to give up pots that way because your chip stack will be going down. And as you can see, Dwan really closing the gap now on Tamashenko. He's nearly worked it back to level. You can't separate these two with a butter knife. Well, Tamashenko is consistent on the button. He makes the men raise every time, doesn't matter what he has. Here he's got the 8 5 offsuit. Dwan with the 5 3 of hearts. He's going to make the call. Well, Dwan has the 5 6, and he makes the call. And a five comes off. It's come King Jack five. 
Both players have a pair of fives. Odds are pretty good that this pot gets checked down. It would be a split pot before it's over. Check. You know, Mike, all their, just feel all their nerves, Check. all their senses, everything, heightened awareness right now. This, this match feels both these guys want this bad. I mean, well, they should want it bad. There's a lot at stake. There is, and they're they're giving it a go. Well, a four comes off. Now, both players still have two fives. As the cars lie, Temashenko in better shape. He's got the eight kicker, meaning if a deuce three or a seven came off, he would have the best hand here. That's 13. Temashenko is going to bet here. Now he's going to put pressure. Dwan going to bet here with the two fives to put pressure on Temeshenko after he checked the flop. He thinks the two fives are the best hand. Dwan has done a lot of checking oh. the turn. This time he's leading the turn. Well, Dwan better hope for a big card here where he could get a split pot out of this. It doesn't happen as wow. the deuce comes off. This kicker plays. That the the is, eight plays. That is pretty tough luck for Dwan, honestly. Had to come two cards below a seven. That wasn't a six there for Dwan not to get a split out of this pot if it gets checked down. And with the deuce coming okay. off, you just have a feeling that Temeshenko would pay him off if he bet with a two five. Goes check, check. He is out kicked. He didn't want to hear that, Dwan. He knows he has the worst kicker in the business. Well, I'll tell you, that's pretty tough luck, I think, for Dwan there for those two cars to come up on the turning river. And him not to at least get a split out of that pot. Mike, it's no wonder, it's no shock at all to understand how Timoshenko beat seven of the best players of the world in heads up matches at the World Series last year to come runner up for the bracelet. He is a tough poker player, obviously, to get money out of in this format. Well, this time, Dwan picks up the Queen Ten of Hearts. But once again, Temeshenko has a better hand. He's got Ace Jack here. And I think if you've got Ace Jack against this guy raising on the button, you just got to ship it right here. I wouldn't fool around one ounce. If I was Temeshenko, I'd just try to end it right here, right now. You can't just call this bet and then give up the pot. I say you just put it all out there. What he's done is actually raise small to induce the shove. And he intends to call, I believe, if Dwan does fall for it. Well, I don't like this play either. I mean, obviously, with 16,000 in the pot, it's only another 4,000 for Dwan to make the call. I think he's going to call with the Queen Ten of Hearts. I wouldn't throw this hand away, getting that price. Certainly don't see him giving this hand up. It's a matter of what he's going to bet and how he's going to play it. If Tom Dwan goes all in. Call. He does make the call. It's exactly what I would do in that situation. Timoshenko, this could cost him dearly, in my opinion, in case Dwan hits something on the flop, which he does not. It comes ace, six, deuce. Another good flop for Timoshenko. He's got the aces. He's got the kind of hand you might want to check here in this spot, believe it or not. I hope the guy would bluff at the pot. Well, 10,000 is the bet. Obviously not a big bet into a pot that's got 34,000 in it, but. One of the most critical pots we've seen in this heads up match. You could feel the tension. You could feel how much was at stake. You could feel that both players were half ready to commit their chips. Well, Temeshenko, very lucky Dwan didn't hit anything on the flop here, in my opinion. Had I been Temeshenko, I'd have shipped it all on the pre-flop. It's well, not over yet. Unbelievable. Dwan. It's not over yet. Well, Dwan is calling this, and this could be his demise right here. Well, now a king comes off, so Dwan does have a straight draw. A jack would give him the straight. That's the only card he can win the pot with as the cards lie. And he says, how much do you have? The answer is going to be about 50, 
55 thousand. Well when it comes a six deuce offsuit. The guy called you on the flop what can he have here. I mean why wouldn't you just ship it right now and hope that he got an ace high or two aces. I mean you think the guy would call you on a short stack on a float bet. That's exactly what he did. How about this bet. Jeez. Fifteen thousand. It's one third pot. Fifteen thousand is bet. He's asking Tom to stick it in. He's goading him. He's holding the carrot in front of his face. If Dwan falls for this, it's over, Mike. And he may just call to try to catch a straight. He's got to know Temeshenko's got a hand here. He's not giving money away in this spot. He's got to know it. Don't bite that worm. I mean, I just can't believe Dwan made the call with his stack size on the turn. I mean, on the flop. He just doesn't have enough money to float bet here. Blinds and ends are too high. Chips are too precious. Yeah, Dwan's now down to. Well, he has made the call That's here. That's amazing. As I said. That's amazing. Mike, he, he might be going for a suicide bluff on the river. Well, he was trying to catch the jack. That's what he's trying to do. Now the nine comes off. Uh, Tamashenko just going to set it in now. He's not going to give the pot up. You wouldn't want the guy to have an ace eight where you're going to just let him check it down behind you. If he's got you beat, you're beat. But you're not giving this hand up if he bets. Obviously, as a card's life, you knew what he had you would check to him, but he could easily have an ace five, an ace seven, an ace eight, where your ace jack is good here, and he's going to pay you off. If you check, he could check right behind you and stay alive in chip count. I think you have to bet if you're Temeshenko here. Huge decision. Come on. Call in. Yep, he's done it. He's doing it in case. Dwan has ace eight, ace ten. If he's got two pair or he's got you beat, you're just beat, but you're not giving it up. But I think you have to try to punish him. That's exactly what he did. A strange hand, a weird hand. Dwan obviously going for it all there and perhaps setting up a possible bluff on the river. Timoshenko didn't let him have it. And he is now poised for victory. Poised. Well, here we go. It's all going in right here. It's the oh, ace high and the queen jack it's called. And again, Timoshenko has the best hand free flop. Can Dwan get lucky and stay alive? in hopes to make the Premier League final table. We're down to five cards of fate. Dwan looking for Picasso to come up. There is one, queen nine, deuce. He's out in front now with the two queens. Timoshenko has flopped bottom pair. I saw the two first. Needs a deuce or an ace to take the lead. Well, there's a queen, doesn't matter what comes up now. Tom Dwan is gonna double up. He has made three queens, and he's feeling a little bit better right now. Two of clubs, too. Yeah, two of clubs is a pretty good dirt card for you. <laughs> I'd I mean, say. The aces are better, but two of clubs is up there. I would say. It's next best after an ace. Sometimes it's tough to finish off. Well, as low as he got in and chips, no spike. he happens to win one more pot. We'll be about dead <laughs> even in chip count one more time. So Six it just shows you. Having patience in poker is a good thing. How much I can remember. Yeah, that is the amazing thing about this kind of format, these head up Raise matches. The swings can be fast and I furious. Call. Call. Ten. Wow. We got an all in and a call here. Well, here we go. All in and called. Dwan out in front with the ace high. It's ace 10 versus King Jack. As you can see, Dwan about a 60. 40 favorite to win the pot. He'll take the chip lead if the ace 10 holds. If it don't, he's out. Well, a 10 comes on the flop, but that Still gives Temeshenko a straight draw. Any face card will give him the lead. A queen will win it for him. 
An eight comes off. Now a seven will win it for him as well as a queen. So king, queen, jack, seven is what Tamashenko needs to move on to the final. <laughs> it's like the World's Fair here for the I river. Can you? King, queen, jack, seven. A lot of outs, as we say. This is a trick Phil Locke did when he won his WPT title. <laughs> he right. went around and assisted the dealer. He said, okay, put my card right. out there. Right now. Come on, deal, let's go, you can do it. It worked for Phil Locke, will it work for Tamashenko? No, an eight comes mm -hmm. off. He tried it. Tom Dwan is gonna double up. He doesn't have the Midas touch that Phil Locke has. Uh, Timoshenko, I, I think he might have used up his, his karma there. The energy has floated out of him. He felt it there. He wanted it. He needed it. Now, Dwan's come back. He's ahead. An incredible Tom Dwan has got the chip lead right now, as you can see. And you got to give the guy credit. He did not just dump his chips in there when he got down to about 30,000. He whittled himself all the way down to 20,000. It shows you a chip on a chair, as we say. Never give up when you're playing tournament poker. Well, this, fight, this match, fight, fight, fight to the last breath. Tom Dwan has done that here, yeah. and it could pay off for him. Fourth final table. We have a little, we have like a little less than average chips. Wow. So it's worth like, or sorry. Like, oh, okay. But yeah. I mean, whatever. The yeah. Phoenix yeah. from the ashes. Like that's Tom small. Dwan. Uh, he is. He has uh, just, uh, been nothing of short of like, class you know, so slow monetarily and face and neither has Yevgeny Timoshenko, who has been brilliant in this heads up. Just so close. Jesse, when you're one card away from winning, it's just so heartbreaking when you don't get it. I'm all in. Praise all in. Well, that's a that's a 12 big blind shove oh, by no. Timoshenko, and when he gets called quick like that, the Jack Seven's beat. The question is, how what? bad? It's real bad. Well, it's King Queen of Spades versus Jack Seven of Spades. Uh, As you can one. see, Tom Dwan over a two to one favorite to win this pot and move on to the Premier League final. Can the Queen, King Queen stand up? We shall see. A King right on the flop, just a dream flop right there. It's gonna take two runners for Temeshenko to win this pot, two runners to make Five, a straight, six. or any combination of a Jack-7 twice. Mike, he's iced him. I think he's iced him on the flop. There's the Queen, it's iced now. Tom Dwan came back from 20,000 oh. to take this Heads up battle, and Tamashenko's got to be yes. devastated. But you know, with what happened in Heat 4 to Tom Dwan, it just seems like justice was I fitting for him somehow to move on to the final. The first match. You couldn't it's separate nice. these two, like not in this heads up match. No, but as you blocked. said, Mike, that, that have been a big deal. Tom no, Dwan that. is it's in the form of his life. Well, just a terrific heads up battle. Tamashenko took heat one. Dwan came back and won heats two and three, and won heat three when he was down to 20,000. What a comeback by Tom Dwan. It's going to be great to see him at the final. After a great showing, Yevgeny's Premier League is over and uh, nearly misses out on the final table. So, obviously, I know you're feeling a bit upset. Let's talk about this last heads up. Well, the last heads up, I thought I, I played it really well. I, I can't think of uh, a way I could have played my hands differently. I got out to a big lead early on. I had Tom down to just 24,000, and then he won three all-ins in a row without me winning any hands in between, and that was that. Tom Dwan takes the final seat at our final table for Premier League. Uh, That's clearly the way you were hoping it would go. Uh, anything surprise you out there today in the heads up? Um, well, I, I was saying there was this one hand where I had Jack 8 versus Yevgeny, and uh, obviously even versus Patrick or Ivy or whatever, occasionally I'll get a read that I'm really confident of. Obviously, it's, it's much less common. Uh, and versus Yevgeny, you know, I can probably count on both my hands or maybe my feet too, I don't know. Like, there haven't been a lot of times I've been confident of a read. And uh, the 9-7 deuce of diamonds board when the turn was a 5 of diamonds, I was just so sure that he had made a big hand on the turn, like that he was happy with the turn. Uh, and I was dead wrong. And if I had bet, you know, I would have almost for sure won the pot. Uh, and it was just, I mean, usually I'd bet. It was a really big mistake not to. And so I was really mad at myself after. But uh, then I got pretty lucky and won anyway. Well, we're going to see you on the final table. So good luck. Thank you. Thanks. The Party Poker Premier League 5 final lineup is complete.
Patrick Antonius, Daniel Jungleman, Kate, Tony G, Matthew Franklin, Sam Trickett, Tom Dwan, Phil Locke, and Scott Seaver all take to the felt next time as they fight for the $500,000 top prize and a championship title. It's for real money. It's really serious stuff. I think he's going to have an explosion here. It's a trap. I can't figure it out, but I know it's a trap. Throwing money away. I just want to survive. You mind I go to the toilet while you think about it? I know it's going to be a long decision. Check, check, check. They're going to tilt me. I'm dropping the hammer. 